Okay, folks, it's that time of the day. It's our keynote speaker. Uh, it's bittersweet. It's a long day. It's been a productive day. Uh, but we certainly are looking forward to the presentation by Kerry Blakeman. It is my pleasure to introduce Kerry. He comes to us from the UK. 24 years of law enforcement experience, West Midlands, uh, outside of Birmingham. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Kerry is uh, nationally recognized for his efforts uh, with Behind uh, the Badge and his efforts in bringing real-time streaming images of police operations or anything of interest to the public to open those doors uh, so people outside of our profession can see what we do. That builds trust and, and that improves our connection with the community. So without further ado, Kerry? Thanks, Doug. My pleasure. And do you, want, do you need to wear this? Why you no, 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 no. Okay, no, no. Good. I'll it, it won't fit, but there okay, you go. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, as Doug said, my name is Kerry Blakeman, uh, and I'm from uh, Birmingham in England, and uh, I belong to uh, West Midlands Police. Um, I was very conscious about being the last speaker of the day, so I thought what I need to do is I need to make this an interactive presentation. Now, having seen and observed you for the last couple of days, I've got absolutely no worries about you interacting with my presentation. But there will be some questions during the presentation. But the good thing is, if you get the answer right, you stand the chance of winning a badge. I've brought some police badges with me, and I've also brought some Olympic badges. Uh, England and the United Kingdom played host to the uh, 2012 Olympics, uh, and I've brought some badges along. So um, I'll let you know, but if you, um, when, the, when, the, when the pictures and, and those kind of things come up, if you tweet them in using the hashtag SmileCon, and um, we'll, uh, as I say, if we get lots of, uh, lots of good answers, we'll obviously have to do, uh, do a, a lucky dip. But as I say, it is interactive. So um, that's me on Twitter, uh, at Kerry Blakeman. And um, as I say, I, uh, I serve with West Midlands Police. Uh, I've been a police officer for 24 years. Uh, I am not a techie. Apologies if you are a techie. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, but I am an ordinary cop. Um, most recently, um, I've been a neighborhood chief inspector in Coventry, uh, where I served for two and a half years. Uh, I now work as the uh, traffic chief inspector. Uh, I think what you would refer to as like highway patrol. Uh, and I have responsibility for uh, policing at Birmingham Airport and also the safer travel team. And just a little bit of something, uh, I'm running the, uh, running the London Marathon in April for guide dogs. Um, I, I went on the treadmill in the gym uh, yesterday, aiming to do eight miles, and after three I gave up. So I've got a bit of work to do. But there you go. Okay, some facts and figures about the West Midlands. Second largest police force in the country after the Metropolitan Police. And it's good news for the local residents who are currently reducing crime by 12%. It covers an area of 348 square miles and serving a population of almost 2.8 million people. And the region sits at the very heart of the country and covers the three major centres of Birmingham, Coventry where I live, big shout out for Coventry if you're watching on, uh, on the internet, and also Wolverhampton. Okay, um, right, there you go, just, it's always good picture paints a thousand words, doesn't it? So uh, West Midlands is slap bang in the middle of the country, just there. Not nervous in any way, shape or form, am I? Uh, but, uh, but there you go. So just to give you a little bit of a flavor of, uh, of where we are. Okay, I said this would be an interactive presentation. Here's a clue. There's a question coming up. Who likes chocolate? There, there you go. That's dairy milk, okay? Cadbury's is based in Birmingham. Now that is the milk chocolate version. What is the dark chocolate version called? And it's also the name of a suburb in Birmingham. So that's Cadbury's dairy milk. But what is the dark chocolate called? If you know the answer, tweet it in using the hashtag, hashtag SmileCon. Okay, don't worry if you don't know the answer to that one. That is a motorway network that sits at the heart of the country. It's called Something Junction. What is that something? Okay. That might look like a curry, but it's not a curry. If you come to Birmingham, 
You must have one of those, but what is it known as? Testing your knowledge here, aren't I? And last but not least, that is a statue in Coventry. That lady there is Lady Blank. Lady Blank rode through the streets of Coventry protesting about the taxes. What is her name? And tweet it in. As I say, you'll get a chance to win uh, one of fantastic prizes. Okay, you're all with me so far. We're all interacting. Okay, a bit of history of British policing. I had a quick chat with Laurie about this. Um, and I was fortunate enough to go out on patrol with San Francisco Police Department at the weekend. And we actually share a lot of um, common, you know, philosophies around policing. That is, there's no prize for this, by the way. Um, that's Sir Robert Peel. Uh, he was the Home Secretary back in 1829. And he introduced the, mo the Metropolitan Police, the modern day Bobbies. And uh, there are some of, uh, some of those officers a number of years ago. Uh, he introduced a number of what's called Peelian principles and above all officers need to be an effective authority figure who knows trust and accountability are paramount. Trust and accountability, remember that because that will go through the uh, presentation. And one of Peel's most quoted principles the police are the public, and the public are the police. Has anyone heard that before us all? Yep, somebody there, great. Sorry you don't win a prize, but well done. Okay, trust and accountability. Just remember that, trust and accountability. I should have actually said that before this presentation started, there was a little bit of banter going on on Twitter uh, about how some of my colleagues back in England were actually going to bed um, because it is late there. And uh, somebody that will be joining me shortly said it doesn't need to be late for, for Kerry to send people to sleep. <laughs> Great. And, and Laurie was just giving me a little bit as well. So I hope you're still with me, but there you go. I know, I know. I haven't even taken the stage and sending people to sleep. Okay, a little bit about neighbourhood policing. Probably not dissimilar to what you have over here. Um, introduced dedicated neighbourhood policing teams back in 2005. Teams are known locally and meet with residents to identify local issues and set priorities. Uh, such things as foot patrol, community engagement and problem solving were, have all been found to be critical in improving the public's confidence in the police. Okay, trust and accountability, just remember those. Let's have a look at our, our key areas, no surprises here. Social media on Twitter, currently 69,200 followers. Uh, Flickr, we've had uh, over a million views on our Flickr um, site. Good old Facebook, YouTube, and uh, as will be demonstrated a little bit later on in my presentation, a bit of a hangout, and obviously the links between Google Plus and the live streaming at YouTube. Okay, um, Flickr, photo of the day. Every day we publish a particular photograph on our website. And this is a particular favourite of mine, and there's a quiz question coming up here. You ready? Okay, that was one of the photos of the day. I don't expect you, oh, well, I expect you to know who the group are. Okay, um, but um, just for your information, I'm particularly proud of this photograph because that gentleman there is my late father. If only he'd have moved to the right a bit. <laughs> Come on, Dad. What do you like? But um, that picture sits uh, on my desk. Um, rather, rather proud of that, as you might imagine. But um, who is the beetle that is in front of my father there? Who is that beetle? And tweet that one in with the hashtag of, of SmileCon. But there's a great album of photographs on Flickr there get a chance, have a look under the West Midlands Police Flickr website. We've got over a hundred individual accounts, officers, police community support officers, neighbourhood teams, the helicopter tweets. Instead of people ringing in and saying, why is the helicopter over my house? Why is it keeping me awake? Just follow the helicopter and we'll let you know what's going on. 
the football unit, soccer unit for you guys, and the dog unit also to eat as well. Okay, so there's the helicopter. Rich Stanley, Rich has just gone to bed. He's been on late. He's got some arrests planned. He's just tweeted. Rich is a response officer, so he's responding to the 911 calls. And uh, Smithy, the CSI dog, he tweets as well. See, 16,000 followers for the helicopter, 4,500 for Rich, uh, and the dog has 3,178 followers. The dog's got more followers than me. But, uh, but there you go. Selavi. Okay, just look at this tweet. This is a rising star. Anyone lost a huge amount of cannabis in the Chelmsley Wood area? Don't panic. We found it. Please come to the police station to collect it. It is, it is great. And just look. Just look at how many retweets that received. Now, this really, really does make me smile because when you think of our journey and social media and worrying about the impact and what the officers might tweet and the impact, just look at this. And I, I think you can see the, the comments there. It's, uh, it's a bit difficult. The eyesight's not particularly brilliant. Ha ha, I love you, Solihull Police. Sounds like possession with intent to supply to me. <laughs> okay, um, Solihull is a rising star. You'll like this one as well. 48 cans of Red Bull stolen from the BP garage, Chester Road. How do these people sleep at night? Do you know what? Um, that is a, that's a big shout out for Solihull Police. Um, and, you know, this need, you know for, for Twitter, it needs leadership. Um, and Sally, Sally's gone to bed. She did tweet me. She said she was rather tired. Um, but she's the chief superintendent at Solihull Police. And she's got a team of officers that tweet. Um, but the one, the one officer that was responsible for those last two tweets is Sergeant Jerome Moran. And um, the Home Office like his style, they like what he does. And he's recently been down to the Home Office in London to explain what his thought process is are when he's tweeting such things. And they're absolutely great tweets, they're really good. Pictures, you, you know what pictures coming up next, don't you? Look. Ah, oh, puppies. 6,800 views. There's me. There's me, I went to the local mosque, the masjid, um, it, was, it was opening, really, really informative day. I had a picture taken with the local congregation. And um, you're thinking, why has he put a picture of a car being towed away? We have a three-day festival in Coventry, and one of the biggest concerns of the residents is illegally parked vehicles. We warn people not to park illegally. Guess what they do? They park illegally, and then the tow truck comes along, and then I take a picture of it, and then it gets retweeted. So, you said, we listened, we acted. So, in terms of building that trust and confidence. We have our own YouTube channel with 3 million views. Okay, so, just want to say there, we've established a presence on Twitter. So, people follow me, great. People think they know me, great. I don't know half of them but they feel that they know me, and I'm cool with that because they actually feel that they can access a senior police officer, ask me questions, criticize me, it goes with the territory, but it comes with a responsibility. But that responsibility is worth it, as you will see. Okay, so the title was, of my presentation, Emergency Service and Public Collaboration Using Social Media, and we go back to Above all, effective authority figure knows trust and accountability. Community engagement is key to improving trust. Now, as a, as a neighborhood inspector, I attended a number of community meetings, and I'm sure as law enforcement, you go to those law enforcement meetings with local residents, but it's the usual suspects, isn't it, guys? It's the same people that turn up week in, week out, month in, month out. Those people, God bless them, but they're not representative of the communities that we serve. Okay, quiz time coming up. You don't need to tweet this one in. Now, don't be shy when I play this track. I want you to shout out the name of the group, and I'll explain why, if I can get this to work. You ready? Three, two, one.
Who said that? Hey, we go. It didn't take long, did it? One direction. He's got, he's got a daughter. He likes One Direction, really, doesn't he? So you're thinking, what is a cop playing One Direction for? I'd actually, I'd got some, I'd got some prompts actually, in case you didn't get it. And there was a bit of a clue there. And uh, you're absolutely right. One Direction. No prize for that, but well done. Your daughter, your daughter would be proud of you. And I have to say that I've come to talk about the use of video platforms. And do you know what? It's all down to my daughter that I'm here on this stage today. Because one day, I saw her watching Harry Styles from One Direction. OK? Now, this is before you know, uh, One Direction became big uh, in the States. They were on uh, was it X Factor or something like that. And what Harry was trying to do was he was trying to build up his fan base. So my daughter was sat on her laptop and she was typing away and she was saying, Harry, Harry, give me a shout out, give me a shout out. You know, and that's what she was after. But what Harry was doing was he was interacting with his audience, with his crowd. And I thought to myself, I thought, hang on a minute. I'll go to public meetings and I have the same usual suspects, which is great. And, you know, we will always engage with the public in their community. But here is, an, here is a chance for me to engage with potentially younger people who don't normally come to uh, residence meetings. So I thought, do you know what? Anything Harry Styles can do, do you know what? I can match it. There you go. Hey, look. Now look at this. You'll be impressed with this. Look. 25 viewers. <laughs> 25 viewers. But they're live. They're absolutely live. Um, and but I don't know if you can see from the right-hand side, a young person is actually asking a question of me in relation to what they can do about, you know, drug abuse in their area. That young person would never have come to a community meeting to tell me about the problems, that, you know, as a young person they were experiencing. So um, we used, and this is back in uh, 2011, and they used a, a platform called uh, TwitCam, which links to Twitter, uh, and we were using, like, hashtags. So I, I did, a, did a few. Now, all good law enforcement agencies work in partnership. Sunnyvale Police here work as a public safety department. I work closely with the fire service and the ambulance service. So I thought, well, if I do it on the streets, if I work closely with the fire service, why can't I do it virtually? Why can't I bring the fire service in as part of my social media presence? And I'd now like to take you to Studio One, which is my dining room. Okay. Uh, and um, sat with me is a, a very smart-looking um, fire commander from, from Coventry. His, his name's Simon Shorten, and, and Simon will be joining us shortly. As you can see, it's a, it's a very high-tech setup. Uh, my Amazon box to raise my laptop up. Um, and, and what I've got here is I've got my police radio. Uh, I've got some stats and some figures. And what we're doing is we're doing a live broadcast um, I'm telling people about incidents that are going on from the police service. Simon's talking about the fire service. And um, that's a live broadcast from, from our house. Sorry, our house? That's not me and Simon together. No, we're not. You know. Sorry, Simon. Sorry to my wife as well. But the reason that we're doing it in Studio One is that we couldn't do it on the police network because is it something called the bandwidth? Is it for the, from the techie? You know, I, I kind of get that. So we were using my home broadband to try and, you know, try and broadcast to people. So we've done it in Studio One using Wi-Fi within the house. So why can't we just take it to the streets? And here's myself and Simon again. Uh, and what we've done is we've just literally hooked into a local Wi-Fi, uh, and that's the mobile police station, and we're talking to members of the public using the Twitter hashtag. And, uh, and that was back in March 2011. Can't believe that's two years away. Okay, and then in May 2011 we go to a place called Charlesmore in Coventry, just remember that, Charlesmore, it's a, a, it's a particular suburb, and uh, we just we record a bit of a video. Now I've got a bit of a problem with my media source, so I might just need a bit of a hand in a moment, just bear with. Oh, is that Simon there? Hello Simon! Sorry, mate, just going to mute you. 
Can you hear me, Simon? Oh, you know, I don't think he can hear me. That's it. He can wait. Right, let's see if we can just get this video going. Now, all being well. So this is just an extract from uh, one of our presentations. For us, uh, please tweet them in. Uh, we will pick them up either via, uh, via our iPhones or uh, via the, uh, the laptop, which is to our left. Ah. Um, as I said, um, we're currently uh, in the child yeah, area of country. Uh, and I'm really grateful for some local businesses that have helped shoot off that uh, Elag abundance notice. If they do so, then obviously we'll have a look on the go to and I'll keep you informed uh, of what the Elag incident is uh, sending. And what we'll do is uh, obviously introduce... It's always, the it's always the technology that goes wrong, isn't it? Come on, Scott. Sorry. ...later on, and then may be able to conduct some time. Um, yeah, so we're in Charlesmore. Um, it's one of the suburbs of Coventry uh, in England in the United Kingdom. I have a dedicated neighbourhood team uh, that's led by Sergeant John Hannon. Uh, right, sorry about that. What that is actually is a clip of us, an actual live video clip of us um, live from the streets. Typical. Never mind. But well, we did do it. So um, I don't know if you can see that I've got a mobile police station and there's, there's a fire truck, fire engine uh, just behind. Uh, I don't think. The media will work on that. If you do have any ah. questions for us, uh, please tweet them in. Uh, we will pick them up either via, uh, via our iPhones or uh, via the, uh, the laptop, which is to our left. Um, as I said, um, we're currently uh, in the Charlesmore area of Coventry, um, and I'm really grateful for some... Just want to pause it there. Um, what we've actually got is that these, these kind of broadcasts developed a bit. That lady there is the local councillor responsible for the Charles Moore area. So she came along and, and, and spoke to camera. And then I've got um, some police officers, some police community support officers, and there's also some fire officers that are there as well, that are part of the, uh, part of the broadcast. Local businesses that have helped. They have to shoot off that uh, Elag abundance notice. If they do so, then obviously we'll have a look what they're going to, and I'll keep you informed uh, of what the Elag is uh, sending. Um, what we'll do is uh, obviously introduce the crew a little bit later on, and then maybe able to conduct some time. Now, we normally crew to five personnel, and that is all the frontline firefighting equipment, hoses, hose reels, and also cutting equipment for any road traffic accidents. Um, yeah, so we're in Charles Hall. Um, it's one of the suburbs of Coventry uh, in England in the United Kingdom. Okay, you kind of get the idea about what we're doing, talking to camera. Okay, so. We've kind of pioneered, mastered the um, on-street thing uh, in terms of the broadcasts. Um, then came along something called TwitVid, which is uh, what we were doing is we were recording videos um, onto our iPhones, onto our smartphones, uh, and then uploading them when we got to uh, either Wi-Fi. And uh, I'll just have a quick look at the one here. I think Simon's appearing yet again. Simon's there. We had a, quite a severe uh, fire at a big... Um, clothing warehouse and uh, Simon broadcast live from the fire there. Um, Chief Constable of the West Midlands Police did a presentation and is that, is that the helicopter one there? Let's have a look. Oh yeah, I, I, I thought the public would like to see their city from, from the sky. So, you know, it's only incumbent upon me to have a flight in the helicopter, isn't it? So, a bit of a flight in the helicopter, a bit of a recording and just show the public uh, what it looks like from the sky. Okay. The riots of August 2011, so established a platform, got a community of uh, virtual followers, and these are the scenes that are happening down in London. I think Sebastian talked about earlier on about how Twitter was used during the, the disorder. So this is Coventry, uh, no prizes for any of the, uh, the landmarks, uh, but this is Coventry and I started to read tweets on Twitter saying it's all kicking off in Coventry. I was on the south coast of England at the time, I was on holiday with my family, how sad, got my laptop with me, I know. And I just couldn't believe what I was reading on Twitter and I thought no, this cannot be right. Put a phone call into the control room and I started to try and address some of the false and incorrect rumours that were taking place 
So please tell me that West Orchards and Central Six, those are shopping areas, uh, have started in the riots, seen on Facebook and getting worried as close by. Someone I know is saying their friend is in hospital from the Coventry riots, how reliable is this? So we literally just started setting the, the, the record straight. People started tweeting back in, Kerry, thanks for letting us know, you know about what's happening in Coventry. You did a great job last night keeping us updated and dispelling the rumours. Um, Community starting to say, look, just follow Kerry, he will separate fact from fiction. Um, and and the, the, the tweets, they, they go on and they go on. Um, so yeah, those are some of the, the examples of the tweets. For crying out loud, why don't people in Coventry follow Kerry? For open, honest updates rather than tweets and rumours about the riots. Coventry is a city of peace and reconciliation. We had one incident. It was a particularly nasty incident because police officers were attacked. But this was in the suburb of Charlesmore. One van was attacked and petrol bombed. So all these people, followers just going through the roof, very busy time, and then a set about challenging the people that actually were putting in false tweets. Kerry Blakeman, I apologize for the misleading information. So challenging people, um, I think we've heard about um, geocoding, finding out from Eastings and Northings where tweets were coming from. One tweet I looked at with, with the help of Mike Downs, Mike will, will join us later on, was actually from the middle of the Irish Sea between Ireland and Great Britain. So how would they know what was going on in Coventry? So you were able to like dispel it as, 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 you know, as false. This is, this is the best one for me, and this is one of my followers. Just seen six hooded youths run down so and such, such and such a road on such, towards such and such a road. They cut down the path towards in Coventry. Now, that tweet was from a lady who had seen lads with petrol bombs. And uh, you can see that she said, I've just handed over the petrol bombs to West Midlands Police and all is calm again. So we've had the small outbreak of disorder and a direct tweet to say, I've just seen this. Now, interesting, Elle was saying that, you know, about Bam Bam. In this instance, this lady was Purple Kit Kat. I'm glad she wasn't a real name because eventually that actually, that, that matter went to court. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that as a result of that, those four men were jailed for rioting in, in Charles Law. Established a presence, reacted to false tweets, confidence of the community to let us know what's going on and they were sent to prison for their part in it. Okay, um, has anybody heard of Bamboozer? No, okay. Right, it's demonstration time. I told you it would be interactive, didn't I? Okay, on my smartphone is I have an app called Bamboozer and what I've done is I've put the title in of my film presentation which says Smile Con Demonstration and I'm about to press record and that is going to stream live onto Twitter or Facebook, whatever I decide, it's up to you. So I'm hoping that when I press record now we won't get any feedback but we will be live on the internet. So if you go to me, um, my tweets you should actually see that that has been broadcast live. I'll just stop that. Is there anybody that can, uh, let's have a look, see if we can... Uh, do, 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 do. Just uh, bear with. Oh, there you go, look. Is that not coming up there? That's interesting. I've got it on my screen here, but it doesn't appear there. Any ideas why that would be, tech people? Okay. What a shame. Have to unplug that. So if you go to... Oh, hello. Me, um, 
It's my, oh, it's technical. Scott, I don't do technical. Okay, but what I can see now is literally I've streamed that lot. I don't know if you, if you can search on at Kerry Blakeman, a few nods, nods around there. What I've done is I've literally streamed that live. Thank you, that's brilliant. I've literally streamed that live onto the internet. So let's get back to the presentation. Right, so there we go. So before, um, what we would do is we would record the video, you'd take it back, and then you'd upload it onto, onto YouTube. What Bamboozer would allow you to do is literally be a citizen, citizen journalist. Um, and I think that shows there that I've recorded about 77 videos. And I think it was going back to uh, the point this morning about how people find things interesting. Um, and we did, we've done videos for such things as police station open day, crime appeals, large scale event updates. What was really interesting, being in San Francisco at the weekend uh, and going, watching the last quarter of the Super Bowl was that um, there were a number of satellite trucks outside the, the bar where I was with a massive pole and a massive satellite dish in the sky and all I needed to do was come along with my bamboozer and press record and I would be streaming on the internet. So I don't need no satellite truck, I just need my smartphone and I can actually broadcast live. So, going behind the scenes of policing, I thought, I think the, the gentleman this morning talked about how the public likes to know things about what we do. And this is, hopefully this will work. Oh, deary me. Going all over the, sorry? Ah, oh, where does that come from? Anyway, there you go, look, it's all a bit, you know, there you go. My word is my bond. So there you go, there's that live streaming of, uh, of the internet. Right. Oh, now we've now got the next one, which is the petrol bombs being thrown. Oh, God, it's all going. Ah, there you go. Anyway, you get the idea, don't you? Some officers are having some petrol bombs thrown at them in, in training. Why, why is mine the only presentation that just goes a bit, you know... Right, we'll get there, don't worry. It's all a crisis. Keep calm, carry on. Eat cupcakes. Ah, there you go, look. Oh, right, okay. Look, see, I told you, I think the public would like to see police officers training in petrol bombs. They'll actually understand what we have to go through. There you go. Okay. So any keep calm and eat cupcakes. Um right, I'm gonna switch that one off. Can I just say how many times I've rehearsed this, I really don't know. Simon's going to get upset because I was going to feature Simon as well. Right, there's Simon. And what we've, um, bonfire night. Guy Fawkes tried to set fire to the Houses of Parliament. Um, 5th of November every night, we have fireworks. Great time for most of the people, but a lot of kids cause problems, antisocial behaviour. So myself and Simon, 5th of November, Joint Police Fire Patrol. Um, and we're actually responding to incidents together. And let's see if this works. I bet you it doesn't. Oh, 
They're not going to be haunted by petrol bombs, are they? I don't know where that source is coming from, actually. Right, we will have to get rid of that when we go to our demonstration. Just turn that down. Okay, so we move on from uh, uh, Bambooza, and you've seen some. You've seen Scott demonstrate Google Plus Hangouts. And um, what I've done is I've taken the concept of showing the showing the public behind the scenes. So this is just before Christmas. Um, this is live from the streets of Birmingham. It's a MacBook. Um, it's um, a, a, an iPad, and it's a, a mobile Wi-Fi hotspot, and doing a live broadcast uh, to the streets. Um, from the streets, and I, we think this is the first one that's actually been done uh, in the UK. Uh, that's my boss. Um, he's in the warm in Scotland, uh, and I'm slap bang in the middle of England on the Bristol Road in Birmingham. But he's joined the hangout to explain um, the, the importance of the actual police operation. Uh, and there you go. That's what I was saying to Devin this morning. I'm getting a bit fed up of balancing my MacBook on the roof of a police car because obviously I need to use the camera. Uh, and actually broadcasting to the public. Um, and again, this is a, a live demonstration, uh, an early morning drink drive check. Uh, you can see Simon there from the fire service and a lady from the ambulance service. Let's see if this works. Bet you it doesn't, but we'll give it a go. Ooh. Good morning and welcome to an early morning drink drive check uh, here in uh, Birmingham. Uh, my name is Chief Inspector Kerry Blakeman from uh, Force Traffic. Uh, today sees the start of 24 hours of uh, tweeting action uh, from West Midlands Police. Uh, I've got the early shift, the 7 o'clock start. I'm out and about on patrol with my colleagues who you can see behind me. You get the idea, live hangout on air from the streets showing the public uh, what it's all about. And we will go back to the presentation. Um, it's interesting, Devin saying, I think Google Plus is approaching 500 million now, so that in terms of um, its popularity, uh, it's second behind uh, Facebook in between Twitter. Okay, so what, what are the benefits? Um, it's all very well saying, you know, this is great, I think it's fantastic, but it's the what. What's been the impact? Um, we've conducted independent research with both young and old followers, people that are engaged in social media, and also non-followers, people that don't know anything about social media. Uh, they say that the benefit is the human side, it's real as opposed to the virtual. The public love the police, that they're interested. Superb feedback from that research group and that we're reaching new audiences. And they say that it, it does make a difference in improving trust and confidence. The future, um, you know, the world is our oyster, live broadcast from major events. You don't need a TV truck to uh, tip up, you can broadcast yourself. Google Plus Hangout meetings, I'm trying to set up meetings from across the whole of the West Midlands where members of the public come and join a hangout. We talk to them about policing, live broadcasts, presentations about new policing initiatives. And then um, what I'm going to do now is, I think you've seen Simon, but Behind the scenes is a guy called Mike Downs. Uh, Mike was actually responsible for filming the, uh, the video uh, over at Charles Moore. Now, if I can get this to work, we'll get the, uh, the Hangout to work. There with.
Right. Aha. Scott, I'm probably going to need you here because I've got them on my screen. You want to take a couple of moments? Okay, ladies and gents, if you just bear with us a couple of minutes, I, I want to try and get this um, hangout working. It is important. So um, just bear with me two minutes, I'd be grateful. Just testing microphone. Oh, you can hear Mike. Oh, this is a mic, sorry. Yeah. Sergeant Hannon has a number of constables and police community support officers that police the area. Um, as well as this um, live internet broadcast, we'll um, uh, and that is all we're looking at is we have a, a laptop set up to our left and we'll be monitoring the screen for any questions that may come in. Likewise, we may also be checking our... I believe we're broadcasting. Um, it certainly says that we are to our left. Just check your microphone again, Kerry. Can you hear us at all? Go on, man. Is it? You test your microphone. I think the audience is on break. Is on. Thank you. Yeah, I can't hear you. Mike, can you hear me? Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. So I think uh, Scott's up at the console, as you can see. Um, yes. Yeah. YouTube Live is about 12 seconds behind. So can you hear us, Kerry and Scott? On yeah, the app? But it depends if you can hear this correct feed. I'm not sure that they can see us. Yeah, but I don't Something's know if they the can hear me now, now or if they're hearing the stream that's from there. Can't can see. You. Mike, can you hear me now? Um, I, can't, I can't hear Kerry, but I can see you. No, I, can see I can't. Him. I mean, we're, we're going to hear and, if he opens up his microphone Sorry, on the laptop. Up. Um, they've got his desktop showing on the screen, I think. Okay, oh, can go. you hear me now, Mike? Yeah, we can. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay, well we've, we've had a few technical problems. Hello? Scott, what have you done? Yep. Scott! Oh. This is going to be on YouTube as the most unprofessional presentation in the world ever. From a bloke that's come 5,000 miles. Have you, is, it, is it a bit of a flick across the screen or something? Ah, the arrow in the bottom corner. Never had that one come up. Hey! Feels good. We're there. Hey! At least I'm keeping you awake and alive and interacted. Mike, can you hear me? First time ever. <laughs> <laughs> you just knew it, didn't you? Right. We, we've been loving this. I've been giving a text text blog into Simon in here. It's fantastic. Right. Okay. Can, ladies and gentlemen, can I introduce to you um, Mr. Mike Downs? Mike, do you want to uh, say hello? Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, Mike Downs here from England. Um, I think myself and Kerry first joined a SMILE conference back in Dallas, I think, a couple of years ago. So that, that's me. And uh, my understudy. <laughs> hello, good evening, everyone, or good afternoon. Uh, and I must say hello to Laurie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, just. I mean, I couldn't, have done it, I couldn't have done anything without these guys, and I know that Mike has been extremely supportive to, to Scott and, and to Laurie. Um, Mike, we've, we've known each other for a number of years. Um, you are no ordinary member of the public, but you are a lay person. You introduce yourself to me. Can you just, just tell the audience a little bit about yourself and, and what's your passion and your motivation for, for helping the, the emergency services with social media? Uh, th thanks, Kerry. Yeah, uh, I'm Mike Downs, so from England. I've, I've been a primary school teacher for 15 years, and then I went into blogging, and from that, um, accidentally met Kerry through tri Twitter. And now, I think for me, I'm, I'm up for a challenge. As for Google Plus Hangouts, I'm supporting Kerry, Scott Mills, Laurie, and so I continue. I've got quite a lot of feedback in my head, but uh, I've been in 1,700 Hangouts, and for me. I'm looking to take Hangouts on Air for UK and world policing as far as I can get it. And it proves for me with the presentation two things. First thing, the feeds that I'm getting on YouTube on the Smile Conference in Sunnyvale have been absolutely excellent and everybody should be congratulated. 
And the second thing is Kerry Blakeman should be congratulated for getting out there and doing it. So from the journey that we've had together between Twitter, Twitvid, Bambooza, Google Plus Hangouts, Kerry is somebody who gets stuck in and doing it. And the recent survey I've done just finally with 53 UK police forces, Kerry is leading the field at the moment. And I, I won't be happy until everybody in the UK and the world are using this technology. Thanks, Mike. I'll give you 20 quid later. <laughs> Simon, um, can you tell everybody about the advantages of Studio One and our collaboration, please? Yes, certainly. Yeah. Uh, Studio One, um, from humble beginnings, and here we are now. Uh, I, I just kind of thought about this question, whether it was your uh, One Direction record collection, or whether it was, um, you know, your Mrs. Blakeman's homemade cakes and tea. Um, but... <laughs> But seriously, um, obviously, this type of work, most of the members of the community normally see the emergency services working together uh, in an emergency situation. Um, and they very rarely see us working together side by side in a lot of the preventative work. So uh, for us, working alongside um, other agencies, and Kerry in particular, um, really allows us to showcase uh, a lot of the work that we do jointly together for community safety. Thank you, thank you, Simon. I re really appreciate that. Um, I mean, it just goes to show you that what we can actually do with, with Google Plus and Hangouts, uh, as demonstrated by Scott. Um, Mike, um, just one, is there one final point that you want to uh, just leave us with, uh, just your opportunity, and then I'll come to Simon. Yeah, I, I think the big thing for me and the huge challenge is that I, I will say in the room that I'm, I'm also a Google ambassador at for Hangouts, and I'm looking to use this technology. But the thing is this is that Scott Mills was making the same point that uh, he was, I can't remember the phrase, it was about local and global. I can keep control or try and look at the UK policing, but if you go into something like USA and Canada, I was told the other day that there's something like, I don't know, 10,000, 100,000 different police organizations there. And for me, who can look through the data, I want a way of collecting all of them together to have some kind of like catalog of who's doing what. And that's the amazingly big challenge for me. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Simon, um, I think Scott's already re referred to the fact that there's no I in team. It is, you know, as much as we have a laugh and a joke about it and we get on really well, we, you know, we're both public servants in terms of, you know, trust and accountability. Um, just a, a final closing point from yourself, Simon, on behalf of West Midlands Fire Service, please. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, from West Midlands Fire Service perspective, um, we uh, really appreciate working alongside. Um, you know, all of our partners in the community, but in particular, from my perspective, you know, I wouldn't have been able to get into, into social media and the way that we engage with the community without, without yourself, Kerry, really, and also all of the support that West Midlands Police have provided for us as we are continually learning using social media. Thank you, Simon. Um, I'm... Sorry, I didn't wish to cut you off in your prime, Simon. <laughs> I'm used to that, Kerry, don't worry. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. All right, get over it. I'm over here, you're over there, yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just, guys, I'm just going to mute the microphone uh, and um, we'll just pop it down to there. Um, in terms of the streaming, um, Scott, if we could, um, there's a little bit more of the presentation to come, but I don't want to stream that live. Okay, could we, could we curtail the streaming now? There's just something that I would just like to, you know, deliver. Thank you if you're watching uh, on the internet. I know it's been a bit of comedy of errors. Hopefully you've kind of got the flavour and the picture about what it's like. Um, on behalf of West Midlands Police, we're genuinely grateful for the invite here. We hope you've enjoyed what you see. Uh, please follow us. Please uh, tweet us at Kerry Blakeman or at WM Police um, and we're, we're, we're happy to help. It's about trust and accountability. You've got to be on the virtual community as well as the real community. Thank you very much for tuning in.